welcome back to comic book news today we're going to talk about the touchy subject of politics and comics should uh, comic book creators be expressing their political opinions in their comics well we'll find out what art spiegelman thinks uh and uh here's a hint i think that he probably uh does <laughs> Hey, welcome back. You know, um, a lot of people these days, there's kind of a, a debate raging, or there had been, about whether comics should express political opinions and whether comic book fans want to read stuff that is political and reminds them of the real world and the, uh, the issues and events of our time, or whether they just want kind of like um, good old-fashioned entertaining and leave that political stuff to... Uh, to everybody else, right? Because we get enough of that, and people don't want that. They want, uh, they want comfort food. They want to. Mm, mm, I want to eat on my Superman sandwich, and I want nothing to ever be wrong. Well, uh, I'm here to tell you that the some of the best comics ever made are political comics, and you know Art Spiegelman, who uh, I brought up in the intro there, created Mouse. If you haven't read Mouse, by the way, um. I, I don't think that you really know what a great graphic novel is. Sorry, you might think Crisis on Infinite Earths is like the end-all and be-all of graphic storytelling, but I'm here to tell you, Bunky, it ain't. There's a whole world beyond superhero comics of amazing stuff to read. Uh, not just adventure stories, but deep personal stories and historical dramas. So Art Spiegelman knows about this kind of stuff. You know what? Let's go to the Million Dollar Comics cam and uh, talk about Art Spiegelman for a second. So, if you don't know him, we're going to just briefly talk about the man. Spiegelman started his career working for Topps Bubblegum Card Company, right? And he worked, he co-created Wacky Packages, okay, in the 60s, and then Garbage Pail Kids in the 80s. So, if that didn't get you right there, like, this guy uh, has some amazing graphic storytelling ideas and came out of that school of, like, reading and loving mad magazine and sort of cartoony art wasn't really a, a superhero guy um you know took the money that he earned doing that stuff and created raw the kind of uh seminal uh indie comics anthology magazine it was crazy art comics and you know it got guys like charles burns and chris ware and and all kinds of people that are, are known in the world of like art comics today kind of definitely got their start in Raw because there was just nothing like it at the time. Um, so, uh, guy's got amazing credibility. And it, what he put out in Raw himself, one of the things that he serialized was uh, Mao's, right? And Mao's was the story, was his father's story of... Uh, living in the uh, uh being in the concentration camps he was a jew during world war ii and uh, it, spiegelman's mother died there and it greatly affected him so but it's not just a historical tale it does recount his father's stories but it also is the story of spiegelman and his relationship with his father and how um that ties into identity and of course you know if you know nothing else about Mao's, you know that uh you know that it used sort of visual metaphor of um, of uh, m all the Jews are mice, all the Nazis are cats, and uh, it, and the imagery is unmistakable. You know, this is the kind of comic that you might have been assigned to read in high school or even in, at college level. It was one of the first comics that was taken seriously in that way. It won a Pulitzer Prize. Uh, it is amazingly emotionally affecting and is beautifully drawn and thoughtfully uh, executed. I, I don't know what more I can say about a comic than that. It, 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 it'll make you cry. Parts of it will make you laugh. Um, you'll, 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 you'll feel real horror for uh, the victims of uh, the concentration camps. You also see, though, that it's nuanced. That he, just because he was a victim, his father's not a perfect man, and he has his own um, prejudices and issues to deal with. And Spiegelman, as a creator, you know, has to deal with his own side of mental hangups 
about his father and, and so on. So anyway, how does this all relate? Why is this coming up right now? Why am I bringing this up for a video? So Spiegelman was asked to write the uh, uh, introduction to uh, a collection of Marvel Golden Age comics, okay? And he, uh, in it, he wrote the following line, okay? I'm just going to read this quote. Um, Auschwitz and Hiroshima make more sense as dark comic book cataclysms than as events in our real world. In today's all too real world, Captain America's most nefarious villain, the Red Skull, is alive on screen and an orange skull haunts America. International fascism looms large. How quickly we humans forget. Study these Golden Age comics hard, boys and girls. And the dislocations that have followed the global economic meltdown of 2008 help bring us to a point where the planet itself seems likely to melt down. So, okay. Agree or disagree with his politics and the analysis of uh, Donald Trump as the orange skull, which is a funny, that's just a funny visual metaphor and fits so well into an introduction of comics um, about the golden age. But the thing is, Marvel... Uh, here's what he, he said. He said he turned in the essay at the end of June. Substantially the same as what appears here. A regretful Folio Society editor told me that Marvel Comics, evidently the co-publisher of the book, is trying to now stay apolitical and is not allowing its publications to take a political stance. I was asked to alter or remove the sentence that refers to the Red Skull or the intro would not be published. So Marvel Comics is owned by Disney now and it could be might be true that they're taking a political stance but if you read current marvel comics you wouldn't see that i wonder if this comes from the folio society or marvel comics itself uh, it's unclear what their exact policy is it says here um but it is clear that uh you know there are folks involved with marvel entertainment uh that are are, are trump supporters and perhaps this came from uh Avi Arad or somebody at the top, uh, higher up at Marvel Studios. It's possible. That's totally beside the point. That is not what I want to talk about, right? I want to talk about those that think political uh, ideas are not meant to be expressed in comics or, or maybe not in superhero comics. So I chose this background for a reason, right? Not just because, yeah, it's attached to every single article about this story that you might find in the media. And it's just the obvious visual when you say comics are not political and they've not been political, they're not meant to be political. Well, buddy, I, I got something to tell you. Whatever your politics are, whatever your ideas are, they are meant to be expressed through your art. So if your art form is comics, you absolutely deserve or, or, or you, you absolutely must uh, be taking your point of view, be it political philosophical, whatever, and synthesizing it into your art. So um, those people like the Comics Gate people, for instance, who want to talk about why, um, you know, you're turning off the main, main fans by talking about all you SJWs, social justice warriors, whatever, that want to write comics and you're not real comics fans. Guys, and it's mostly guys, but not all guys, um, you're you're just wrong, okay? What matters is not the, the the political ideas that are going into comics, because man, if you look at the history of comics creators, they have they are all over the map. They have there's many different uh, types of people. If you go from you know Jack Kirby, who you know anti-fascist and anti-Hitler. Uh, 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 but then compare him to Steve Ditko, who had this sort of like um, uh, radical objectivist viewpoint. And then compare that to, uh, I don't know, Frank Miller. And who knows what the heck that guy is thinking. If you ever read Holy Terror or any of his sort of political stuff. Ay, ay, ay. Anyway, I'm not here to judge you on your political views. You can be a Trump supporter. And that's okay with me. I don't think that you're a racist because you're a Trump supporter per se. There's many reasons. You gotta. I'll judge you on your racism based on what you say and what you do to me. Okay, not on necessarily who you vote for. 
uh, and and if you're a super sort of you know uh, left wing, I want the government to control everything person too. You know what? I understand where you're coming from. These these are people's point of views. Where do I? Where am I coming from? Does it matter? Does my politics really matter? I, I let's just say I believe in freedom. That should tell you a, a, enough right there, right? I want to be free to do and say and read and 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 experience the things that I want to experience as long as I'm not hurting anybody else or preventing them from doing and seeing and experiencing what they want. Man, this is a weird video. I've not made one like this before. But I'm kind of glad that I did because not everything's just about pop culture and entertainment, right? Underlying these stories and all of the best stories have to be some kind of point of view. And and you can read and enjoy literature, comics, books, whatever, that comes from a different point of view than your own. And in fact, I challenge you to, because if you're not, if you're only reading and seeing things that come from a certain political point of view, and you're not able to at least try and understand where someone that you view as a political opponent is coming from, then folks, I'm going to say we're never going to get out of the political mess that we're in. And uh, we're going to have a lot of problems. And the fact that this is creeping into the comic book world as well, man, let's get out there and let's get your ideas out on the surface and let those ideas fight each other out. And, and, and I think we know from the comics, right, that the good ideas, the heroic ideas, the best ideals of mankind is what is destined to win the race. But I don't get to decide for you what those ideas are. We've all got to do that together. It's a conversation. Man, I don't know where this video is going. I don't know if you're going to like it, but I want you to comment on it and let me know. Do you like this kind of commentary? Tell me. Do you hate it? Let me know. And most of all, thank you for having a civil conversation, right? Let's try to not judge people by their political ideals, but try to understand them and make them understand our own ideas. And even more importantly, thank you for watching and supporting this channel. So when you like and subscribe and pass this on to other people, it helps me, it helps the channel, it helps us all uh, kind of enjoy this universe of comics that we're all a part of. So uh, thank you for watching.